Okay, I want to share with you a really cool secret. It's really a mathematical theorem that we can prove, but it's a great source to, to save, uh, save ourselves from a bunch of work when we're trying to find the zeros of certain polynomials. Suppose I'm looking at a polynomial equation where all the coefficients are real numbers. Okay? And suppose that I know that one solution turns out to be a complex number of the form a plus bi. Then since all the coefficients are real numbers, I automatically know for free a second zero to this particular equation, namely the conjugate of this. Let me just remind you what the conjugate of a complex number is. If I have a plus bi, its conjugate is a minus bi. Namely, just change whatever the sign was on the, on the i term and to switch it. That's the conjugate. And it's a really cool fact that if this complex number is a solution to a polynomial equation that has real coefficients, then its conjugate will also be a solution. It's kind of like buy one, get one free. If you know one, you actually know two for free. Now, this is actually called the conjugate pairs theorem, but it only, conjugate pairs zero theorem, but it only applies, it's really important to remember this, it only applies when all the coefficients are real numbers. It only applies in that case. Let me, let me show you an example. Let's find all the zeros of this polynomial, p of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 3, given that we're told that one of the solutions is the complex number i. Now, we don't have to show that, although you could check it for, for yourself. In fact, uh, maybe that'd be fun. Let's just check it really fast for ourselves. Let's see. Someone gave us that as a hint, that maybe i is a solution. So let's find p of i. That means wherever I see an x, I put an i. i cubed plus 3i squared plus i plus 3. Let's see what happens. i cubed. Well, i times i is negative 1, and then I got an extra i, so that's negative i. And then i squared is just negative 1, so this is negative 3 plus i plus 3. And check it out. Negative i and i is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. This equals 0. It checks. So we do really have a 0 to this, namely i. But look, all the coefficients are real numbers. 1, 3, 1, 3. So what does that mean? It means that for free, by the conjugate pair zeros theorem, I actually know another 0. Not just i, but its conjugate, which would be negative i. Technically, if you want to see the, the details of that one little teeny step, I'd write i as 0 plus 1i. That's just i. And so, what would the conjugate be? It'd be 0 minus 1i, which equals negative i. OK, cool. Well, check this out. If I know that i is a 0, that means that of this polynomial, I know a factor. A factor must, in fact, be x minus i. And then I have another factor known, because I must have x minus negative i. So both of these must be factors of this. And what does this equal? Well, this just equals x minus i, and then a negative and a negative is a positive, so it's x plus i. And so that must evenly divide into this polynomial. And we could actually work through this a little bit. If we just FOIL this, I see x squared, and then the inner terms and the outer terms cancel. They had to give 0. And then I'm just left with negative i plus i, which is negative i squared, which is negative negative 1, also known as plus 1. So we made an amazing discovery. Someone just told us that i is a 0 of this polynomial. And we concluded from that that x squared plus 1 must divide into this polynomial evenly, which means we can actually do a long division of polynomials, divide this into this polynomial, see what's left, and what's left is going to tell us the, the uh, root or the, the extra 0 that we're missing. Because this is a cubic, it will have three zeros. So I take that thing we just found, x squared plus 1, and I'm going to now divide it into x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 3. All right, long division of polynomials. I love this. I really do. So what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it x cubed? Well, an x. 
So I write x here. What's x times x squared? That's x cubed. And then what's x times 1? That's going to actually be an x. I'm not going to write it here. I want to write it under the like terms. And then I subtract everything x cubed minus x cubed is 0, x minus x is 0, but I am left with this 3x squared, and then I bring down this term here, plus 3. What do I have to multiply x squared by to make it equal to 3x squared? Well, I have to tack on a plus 3. 3 times x squared is 3x squared, and 3 times 1 is 3. And check it out, when I subtract, everything cancels. I'm left with 0. It goes in evenly, which of course we knew by this theorem. And so what that means is we now know how to factor this bad boy. This polynomial, p of x, actually equals x squared plus 1 multiplied by what we just found, which is x plus 3. But once you factor it, finding the zeros are really easy. We just set it equal to zero and solve. Well, of course, the first two solutions we already found. We know they are, in fact, um, plus or minus i. That's what we just found here. So we know that, that this tells us that x equals either i, x equals minus i. That's from here. But now we get the last solution. If x plus 3 equals zero, that means that x equals negative 3. And so we get that last solution that we were searching for, negative 3. So since this particular polynomial had real coefficients and someone gave us a complex solution, complex 0, then we know that its conjugate was 1. And if we have that, then we can actually long divide and find the rest. That's the power of this result, and it's really cool. It's kind of like that story, you know, Noah's Ark. The, the, the complex solutions come in pairs. You have the complex solution and its conjugate. As long as the coefficients of the original polynomial are real, they come in pairs. And so buy one, get one free. Have fun. I'll see you soon.